first into the tank is someone who's created a flavour that he believes is irresistible to sharks. Hi Sharks, my name is Kettle and I'm the founder of Delicious. I'm here to seek $300,000 for 25% equity in my company. I recently introduced a unique and amazing spice mix to Australia. I invented bacon seasoning and it makes anything taste like bacon. Pasta, burgers, popcorn, roasted veggies, green beans, and even steak. And just when you thought it couldn't be good enough, it is even low in calories, low fat, low sodium, and vegetarian. People are going nuts for my seasoning. Customers are purchasing repeat orders, restaurants are using it in their food, and retailers are selling out. Since I started this business less than one year ago, I have generated more than $60,000 in sales. But what's even more exciting is that almost half of that revenue was created this month. But what I've learned from my customers is that there is a need in the market for more exciting seasonings. So with an investment from you, I will expand my range of products and provide people all around the world with the most exciting cooking experiences they have ever had. So Sharks, if you want to join me in revolutionizing the seasoning industry, and make everything taste delicious. <laughs> Kettle, thank you very much. So 300,000 for 25 percent, valuing the business at 1.2 million. Yeah. That's a pretty interesting valuation for $60,000 worth of sales. No doubt you'll convince us. Give it a try. You have a bacon-flavored popcorn in front of you. So before I eat it, Kettle, I just want to convert. Is it gluten-free? There might be traces of gluten. Is it nut-free? Uh, there might be traces of nuts. Is it dairy free? Uh, no, it contains dairy. Okay, is it vegan, paleo, or organic? Uh, no. Okay, I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Got chippy fingers. <laughs> While we're talking about the product, how do you get stuff that tastes like bacon without using bacon? So if you think about bacon, it's really just a smoky, savoury meat. And all of those flavours can be replicated through vegetables and uh, smoke flavour. Well, it says suitable for vegetarians here. Yeah. So you're going to have to support that with, with science. That's good. Kettle, it's an unusual name and you have an accent. Tell us about your background. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm uh, originally from uh, Norway, actually. From Norway? Yeah. Hey, I can snack a little Norse. Yeah, yeah. do come there. Yeah, ye heter andru. So whereabouts in Norway? Um, I'm from the southern parts, Christian Sand is Christian the Sand, name yeah, of the town. yeah, great. Yeah. What brought you to Australia? So I decided to move to Melbourne, started a, a master's degree in business there, but honestly, I spent too much time watching Shark Tank uh, <laughs> when I should have been to lectures. Yeah. Um, that, and it has inspired me so much to start my next business. Oh, great. Well, we've achieved something then. That's good. <laughs> you just said you did $30,000 in the last month of sales, is that correct? Yes, yeah, about uh, $29,000. So let's go through the dynamics and the economics. Uh, one bottle costs $20 if you buy it uh, individually. More than 90% of my sales are selling a four pack. So if you buy a four pack, you get it for $39.95 and I pay for shipping. Total costs after shipping from me to the customer is about $14.76. 15 bucks, on, on a 40 buck sale. Yeah, $39.95. Kettle, you said earlier on that you uh, you enjoyed watching the Shark Tank TV show. Um, something makes me think it didn't, didn't comprehend with you, mate. You've actually come with a very impossible ask to fund. Because of the, the 300,000 bucks is what you need, right? You've asked for 25%. Pretty sure it's $1.2 million valuation, right? It can't be done. For 300,000 bucks, what would you value this business at? Yeah, so I value it at 1.2 million. I know what you valued it at, but if you sit in my chair here, we can swap yeah. if you want and you can give it a go. Do you want to sit in here? And I'll pitch you a business doing 60,000 bucks and see what you say. Come on. Yeah. Come on, get down there. Okay. <laughs> 
kettle. I've got this great business for you, mate. Bacon flavoured sprinkles make anything taste like bacon. 60,000 bucks worth of sales in the last six months. I reckon it's worth 1.25 million. What do you think? Oh, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> See? You're in. You have uh, repeat customers. Half your revenue was created this month. You have scalability. Well, okay, so how about, how, about, how about this? How about this? He's been roasted. Sorry, thanks for coming. He's been thanks roasted. for coming, Steve. <laughs> thanks for coming, Steve. You're out. <laughs> You're out. Roasted. Good well, well done, Kettle. Well that well was well done, well well mate. Well done. Good response. Good See? Well done. You called his bluff. bloody ridiculous. One day I'll be here. So, Kettle, here's your 30-second pitch to justify that huge valuation, 1.2 million. Let's go for it. I have generated 30, almost $30,000 of revenue through only Facebook ads. We still have multiple channels that we haven't activated yet. You've got about 10 seconds left. I'd start talking numbers. We are estimating to have at least $600,000 this year without an investment. $5.8 million next financial year without an investment. But if I can get $300,000, I'll do more than $25 million next financial year. 25 mil? Bullshit. Be careful. Don't don't throw numbers out like that when you, when it's actually just really fanciful. When you're talking to investors, you lose all credibility because there's not a hope in hell that you'll be able to achieve what you're talking about achieving in that time frame. Is this product your creation? You've got the recipe, is it? Yeah. So well, the final recipe is with my contract manufacturer. Right, so they own the final recipe for this product. So you don't own the IP on this one? Uh, no. And one of the reasons why I'm here today is not to focus so much on this particular bacon seasoning. It's more about all the new flavors that sorry, we can create. Sorry, sorry, that's a really Ooh, important question. Red, red light, red light. You are tied to a manufacturer because he owns the IP. Yep. If he wants to double the price of the product because you've become really successful and you've done a great job, then you can't take that product away from him and give it to another manufacturer to create, correct? Uh, I don't have access to recipes. I couldn't do that. That's correct. You don't own your IP. Your supplier has you by the balls. They're bacon flavoured balls, though, so it's not too bad. So... <laughs> I'm out. Mate, I think that the IP issues that we're hearing about here, which is exceptionally real, and the fact you threw a red flag at us and said, well, that's OK, I've got other products, tells me how bad that issue is. You've been to business school. You actually know that this is an impossible business valuation. I cannot fund 300,000 bucks on any percentage in this business. I love it. I'm going to enjoy it. Thank you very much. I'm out. An awesome pitch. Okay, thank you so much for your feedback. Your valuation is smoking hot. Way too hot for me, I can tell you. And unfortunately, I've got to burn you. I'm out. Thank you for your feedback. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cattle, congratulations on what you've done. I don't think this is going to be your thing. You will find your thing, and I look forward to seeing it. Thank For you. this deal, I'm out. Thank you. So then there was one. Kettle, you are one cool Norwegian dude. Um, I'm going to make you an offer. Oh. But it's subject to a couple of conditions. So the first condition is that you and I are going to sit down with your contract manufacturer and we're going to own the IP. Because the horse hasn't bolted yet. The second thing, I need to be sure that this is suitable for vegetarian ingredients and that this will be eligible to work under that heading in the US market. Because I see a big market for this, pizza chains, fast food chains and a whole bunch of other companies that want the bacon taste without the bacon ingredients. That, I think, is a big market. 
$300,000, I'm gonna take a big risk. 45%. Oh, bite his hand off. You yeah, grab that. You, bite you, his hand you off. need me to bail you out of this hole. Mate, you only get someone along every now and again. I thought he was yeah. gonna take 90%, so. I think for no, you can have incredible. you can have control, but it's subject to those two things. He's having a geriatric moment. Let him go. Then we get to the U.S. market. Get him before he wakes up. Take, yeah. him, take <laughs> your dream state. Thank you so much for the offer. I'm really honoured. It's hard for me to go from 25% to 45%. In business, I've learned that you have to set limits uh, at, at some point. Um, Mike, bite his hand off. Kettle from Norway has developed a bacon seasoning that he says will make him and his investors a stack of money. But when they found out Kettle didn't own the recipe, the sharks dropped out. You don't own your IP, your supplier has you by the balls. Only Andrew could see enough potential to make an offer. Three hundred thousand dollars, forty-five percent. Oh, bite his hand off! You yeah, grab that and bite his hand off. But now it's Kettle who's balking. In business, I've learned that you have to set limits uh, at at some point. So, would you be able to come down? Okay, I'll come down. Forty-four percent. Kettle, seriously, Body grab it. quick grab before Body's he changes off. his mind. Can I take twenty seconds to think? Sure. Okay, we have a deal. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go and get him. Good hey, to see you. Awesome. Thanks. That is a very smart decision. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. And to be fair, he gave you better advice than the rest of us. Let's go yeah. back and renegotiate. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Kettle. Oh, thank you so much. You are everybody. a Thanks. lucky bastard. <laughs> yes. Next into the tank, a mother and son hoping to net a shark the environmentally sustainable way. <laughs> Hello, my name's Peppy. I'm from Superfood Sushi. I'm a director and this is my son, Guy. Hi, I'm the manager of Superfood Sushi. And today we're here to ask for 250,000 for 22% of our business. Superfood Sushi is Australia's first and only vegan sushi cafe. When we couldn't find any decent fishery sushi to eat, we decided to do it ourselves. We opened five months ago in Newtown in Sydney, and since then we've got a gong from Australian Women's Health magazine as one of the top 50 healthiest cafes in Australia. Healthy eating is vital to the body, mind and soul. So our sushi is no meat, no dairy, no fish. Sushi is a global multi-billion dollar business, as you're probably all aware. And it's got to change. The oceans are being overfished totally. Even Jiro, the sushi master, says the content of sushi in five years' time will not be the same as it is today. We know that opening one small sushi cafe is not going to change the world, but this is your opportunity to get on board and join a company that's doing something about it before even sharks become sushi. Oh. So who'd like a bite of us? Yes. We've got some samples for you. I'm worried it's going to be pretty boring to eat because you've got no fish, no dairy, no meat. Well, that's what we're here to do. We're here to destroy that myth. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. OK, so what you have on your plate, one of them's a mango or go-go, and then the pinkish-looking one, that is dehydrated watermelon with tamari. So that's like mimic salmon. Enjoy. So we're not eating fish at all, are we? No, you're not. You like it? A sceptic. A total sceptic. <laughs> That's OK. So you're not a fan? No, mate. Was there any you liked? Oh, I haven't tried them all. The first one put me off. I've got a bad taste in my mouth. I've got my own special twist on you know, how I prefer to consume things. You're a paleo man. Uh, well, to be honest, you know, but it is, this, this does appeal to a certain part of the market. I can be convinced with sales traction. Mm -hmm. 
So um, in terms of revenue, what are you doing? In terms of revenue, we've turned over since we opened, uh, which is just on five months ago, $107,000. Our sales have been increasing by at least 20% since we opened. Month on month? In the last six weeks, they've increased 20%. The 20% increase is great, but it doesn't reflect that there's a growth in the business. You kind of need a full 12 months to actually fully see what the cycle is, and then you can track it year on year to see where the growth is. I love your product. I thought the mango was delicious. Thank you. How do you justify a 1.1 something million dollar valuation? The future of food is going to be in more plant-based chains, such as Veggie Grill in the States that has now got 28 outlets. So we're hoping to initially open two new stores and we've based our valuation on building the business to approximately $10,000 to $11,000 net per store per month of profit. I've grown up in Western Queensland, raising cattle creating beef. And I can tell you, eating beef, eating fish is part of a good omnivore diet. So Guy, I'm looking at you, mate. You, are you a vegan? Yeah, I am. Why vegan? The way you feel and how light you feel and the way you feel the energy in your food and the way you feel just like you feel free. You feel a lot less weighed down. Just try it. We, we did crawl out of the caves at one point in time and actually eat, eat, eat animals yeah, yeah, to get to did. where we are, right? Then, you know that, don't you? Yes. So how many vegans are there out there? It's a growing population. Give me a percentage. Well, our, our main reason for opening this is really not for the vegans, one, but what's, your, what's your market, what's your, what's your potential market size? It's an actual fair income question. You're asking for 250,000 bucks here on over $1 million valuation on what it, I think is an amazingly niche business, right? So you're evading the question. Peppy Marshall and her son Guy want $250,000 for a 22% stake in their vegan sushi business. The size of their target market has made some sharks uneasy. So how many vegans are there out there? It's a growing population. Give me a percentage. Well, our, our main reason for opening this is really not for the vegans, but, but what's, your, what's your market, what's your, what's your potential market size? It's an actual fair income question. You're asking for 250,000 bucks here on over a $1 million valuation on what it, I think is an amazingly niche business, right? You're evading the question. I'm sorry we don't know the percentage straight off the top of our head of like how many vegans there are out there, but when I'm standing out there handing out free sushi and I'm getting people in the door, then that is what I can see. We're part of like a revolution. There's a pizza shop down the road that went completely vegan. You can't even book a table there. It's really busy. There's another fish and chip shop that has just opened up down the road. They're completely vegan. What sort of fish do you have in a vegan fish and chip shop? I, I don't get it. The numbers don't. The numbers don't sing to me. I, I hate being preached a lifestyle ad as well. To be quite honest, I find it actually quite condescending. Um, so, uh, but I still wish you all the best. I don't want to see anyone fail in business. But I'm out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look, I can tell you where I'm at. I like. You. The food tastes fine. If I was walking past your store, I'd probably come in, especially if you were handing me a free one. I'm sure there is a market. I get that you're trying to save the world and we are overfished and all that good stuff. But for me, just as an investor, I just don't see uh, that I'm going to get my money back anytime soon. For those reasons, I'm out. All right, thank you anyway. and Guy, you know, you talk about a wave in the US, but that's a long way from what, what you're doing here. What you have is a brand new business that's still proving concept and still bringing people into the fold. I do believe it's a wave. I'm absolutely an advocate of um, humane uh, production of food, but I'm out. Okay. I was trying to work out, you know, it's a lot of money. Generally, when I invest, I invest in a concept, 
and the people behind it. So why, why would I want to get into business with you? We go into business together. We're going to build a business together. We're going to build a friendship together. You're going to get your money back, I promise you that. And it's just going to build, and it's just going to keep building, and you're going to get really wealthy. You're looking for a wave of enthusiasm, the food revolution, yeah, look, it's a long way off. I'm, I'm struggling with your business model that is scalable. I'm out, guys. Okay. Look, I love, I love that you've, um, I mean, I think the product's really good, but right now, the sales just aren't there for me yet. Just a little bit, bit too bit young. Bit too soon. Bit too soon, but you know what, keep going. Have a, have a great journey, because it is a great journey, but I'm out. All right, thank you, and thank you all so very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. It's a cottage startup, and it'll always be a cottage. I didn't mind the taste of it. I just thought it was terrible. Do you think the sharks missed out on a really good opportunity by not jumping in early? Yeah. I see us expanding, and we've got a, a business model that's easily replicated. Super orbs have landed. Taste life in the next dimension. Ooh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Greetings, sharks. My name is Shah, and together with Wa and Bren, we're Wildcrafted, creators of Super Orbs. Super Orbs are a nutritious, delicious, 40 gram vegan snack meal made with organic superfoods. Super Orbs are low GI, nutrient dense, and made without fillers, additives, or preservatives. What we have created is a product that is handcrafted but made by a low processing manufacturing solution that can produce high volumes without losing nutritional integrity. Super Orbs are an innovative product, a unique and dynamic brand commanding front and centre position in over 100 stores in Victoria and South Australia. Super Orbs were launched six years ago with an initial investment of just $57 as an exercise to see what three cosmic Epicurean adventurers could do with determination and perseverance. Now, with a turnover of $260,000 in the last financial year and a detailed research and development phase behind us, we are ready and able to take the next step and expand nationally. So, we invite the Sharks to jump on board the Super Orb High Vibrational Starship. Prepare for blast off, but remember to hold on because this express ship is heading for expansion beyond our solar system. So, who's Shah and who's Wa? I'm Shah and this is Bren. Bren, okay. And Wa's not here with you, Wa's he's your not third here. partner. That's my life partner, she's not here. Are they your real names? Uh, they're our spiritual names. Just checking. <laughs> what was the ask? Oh, $200,000. $200,000, yeah. For 20% equity share. So that's a million dollar valuation? Yes, indeed. Right. That is out of this world. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a big, big dimension there. How did you arrive at that? Obviously, uh, the opportunity that we foresee for the product. Can or... we taste the product? Yes. Let's taste it. Right idea. <laughs> what we eat informs everything about us, whether it's our physiology, uh, whether it's our consciousness makeup, you know, and we can elevate ourselves in so many ways through food. So tell us about the maca. Maca is a great uh, immune system builder. Mm -hmm. It um, works on sort of hormonal stuff as well. Oh, Naomi wants the maca. Oh, stop. <laughs> I want a cacao. <laughs> So which one do I have so I can live forever? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> We've just actually introduced lacuma into our smoothies. Lacuma's uh, really awesome in ice cream and things like that. It's nice. It's really tasty. Is there a bacon one, mate? <laughs> <laughs> bacon one? No. We um, sell millions of these. Yeah. What's different about yours? We do push superfoods a bit more. Um, than other, other brands. They tend to focus a little bit more on, on protein. Honestly, I, I can look past a lot of this sort of stuff. There's lifestyle choices here galore. 
What's your business doing? You did 260,000 bucks to June 30, was that correct? That's correct, for 2015. Okay, you've been going for 10 years or six years? Uh, six here? years. Six years. I can tell you in the six years we've been operating, we've actually uh, turned over $1.25 million in revenue. Okay, uh, six years, that's great for six years. Yeah. So what are your uh, margins? Okay, look, we, we know that the average sale uh, of each unit at the retail is $4, okay? Um, it, so this is a unit? Yeah, that's a unit, uh, $4 for that unit. About a dollar to a dollar twenty to make over the, over the last couple of years. That's a lot. Absolutely, it is a lot. Now, what we're looking at, we're, we're buying all our materials at minimum quantities, I guess you could say, at the highest end. How much have you guys spent uh, to get to this point? How much have you contributed as equity? There's no equity in the house or any leverage or anything like that. No debt in the company? Uh, well, we do have about uh, $61,000 in debt at the moment. So 61 k in debt. Yep. What sort of debt's that? Sharth and Bren are seeking a $200,000 investment in their Super Orbs protein balls. But they've hit a major snag. No debt in the company? Uh, well, we do have about uh, $61,000 in debt at the moment. So 61k in debt? Yep. What sort of debt's that? It's mainly to do with uh, raw materials, a few, mainly so raw materials, so production so is suppliers. This, is this credit that they actually give so you? That's so that's credit. They have given us credit. I'm asking the questions here. I can get there as well, all right? So what's your accounts receivable? Accounts receivable, they're working around about uh, $20,000 a month at the moment. So you've got 61k in accounts payable and 20k in accounts receivables. That doesn't make sense, does it? No, it doesn't make no. sense. Well, look, you know, we're about to um, we're about to get some product off our production uh, crowd, which is around about in stock in, in hand will be about thirty five thousand dollars. At your cost? At our cost. Yeah, okay. Okay. So we've bought that. So essentially, what we've got is twenty thousand owing to us and around about thirty five thousand in stock ready to go. So, you know, th this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a situation where we're trying to raise some funds to get it to the next level. So, Shah and Bren, I always like to know who I'm doing business with. Like, who are they? What do you do? But you guys must be able to answer each other's questions. Well, um, we communicate a lot. We, we do li all live together, actually. So you all live together? Yeah, we've had to share a house to keep costs um, down. So what does that do in terms of taking somebody from the outside in? Because they're not part of the conversation. Yeah, we'll welcome, welcome you in. I'm, re I'm ready to make a decision. I love your passion and I absolutely think that you're on a wave. But I'm looking at you going, can I work with you? As a minority shareholder at 20% and valuing your business at a million dollars, I don't think I'm ever going to get a say in anything. And so for that reason, I'm out. Janine, this is your area. What do you think? Um, I'm thinking. So you're, you're still you're, thinking? You're welcome to go. How long are you thinking for? I might be a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got time. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you know how I'm feeling. I'm probably not your natural customer, let alone your natural investor <laughs> in this sort of stuff. You haven't got a bacon flavoured one, so you're in trouble as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I wish you all the best, but I'm out. Okay, Stan. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I like your product. I think you're riding a wave of opportunity, so I get it, but it does need some serious business discipline. For this product, I'm out. Yeah. You've created something out of nothing, so well done to you on that. Thank you. I also think your business is at a very interesting stage where you really need what I call smart money. So you don't just yeah. need an investment and you don't just need a smart shark. What you also need is help on the sales and distribution side. And I'm just not that right partner. But I wish you well, I'm out.
Look, you, you actually did an excellent pitch, so well done. Thank you, Jane. The product itself looks great. The taste, great, you know, and that's, look, you know what, it's all very well having something that is healthy for you, but if it tastes crap, no one will buy anything. So, tick, 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 tick. I don't like the business model. You're very close to being in a bit of a pickle with regard to cash, and I know that that's why you're here to try and grow cash flow. Um, you're in 100 stores, that's fantastic, and you're getting reorders, and it's, it's all good, but the business model for me isn't right. I'm out. Okay, thanks, Jane. Thanks, Jane. But I will give you an introduction to our purchasing manager, and I'll open that door for you. Go in there, see what we can do about getting doing a couple of trials and seeing if we can get your product into our stores. Wow, okay. thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Everyone, so like good best you. Thank right. you. Find a good strategic partner. Yes, that's it. Well, We're looking for them. Thanks, well guys. Done. Thanks, guys. Thank well done, guys. Appreciate that. Well, I guess, you know, for them it was a fair bit of an ask, but, you know, I think we're still on the right track and we'll continue to, I guess, you know, go along our path and, and, and try and seek abundance that way.